Hello, this is Michael McCarthy, and in this video we're going to take a look at using maps with Phoenix FD in order to map uh, your fluid emission as well as modulation of uh, colors and displacement. The first thing I'd like to start off with is how to map your fluid emission. So if we click on our source, you can see that uh, many of these different source areas have maps that we can use to map that source. The first one we'll try out is our discharge area. So if we uh, just go and simulate without having started any sort of uh, mapping process or anything like that, you can see that this kind of emits a, uh, a smoke cloud and it emits from the entire surface right now. So we'll just kind of stop that and go back over to our source and we're going to put a map in the discharge slot. So let's pop open the material editor and you can see there's a few different materials here. If um, we go to frame one and just uh, render out, what we should be able to see is uh, how this checker material is going to be mapped onto uh, this cylinder. So if we take that and just pop it into the discharge slot over here, what will happen is uh, the white area of the map are going to discharge any sort of fluid and the black areas are not going to discharge any at all. Um, now this doesn't have to be like the material it doesn't have to be actually on the object itself it just has to be in the map slot but uh, just for clarity uh, I put it on here so that you can kind of see where these uh, different pieces are. So now that we have that discharge map in, we can go over to uh, start simulating again. And you can see pretty clearly that uh, only the areas of white are actually discharging some sort of fluid. So we can take this and, uh, you know, put it on any, you know, character or object and decide exactly where on that object we want to be emitting fluid from and if you wanted to animate that texture map you could absolutely do that as well. So let's just uh, stop this here and go back to frame zero and we're going to use the same checker map in the temperature slot to look at the difference between discharge and temperature. So let's pop this into temperature and uh, let's just uncheck the map or even clear it out under discharge and make sure that we check the map option there so that it's using that map as far as what it's going to emit from and we'll go back here and click on start and now what you can see is the fluid is getting emitted from the entire surface you see it push away here and being even emitted over here but the temperature is actually controlled by this map so you know the hot areas are going to be the white areas and the cool areas are going to be the dark areas if we go down to preview and just turn off the smoke we'll see this much more clearly so you can see that only those white areas are actually emitting a uh, very hot temperature and the cool areas over here are emitting uh, more smoke and things like that and if we just kinda go back to frame zero we'll see that emitting like that so using maps to adjust where and how you're going to emit fluid from an object and the way that it's going to simulate in that environment is a powerful way to control your simulations you can go into uh, add maps to smoke and UVW and fuel and things of that nature too. Okay, so uh, let's just clear this out and let's simulate without any uh, sort of maps just to about frame 20. And the next thing we're going to look at is how we can adjust the color and transparency based on maps in Phoenix. So once we kind of get over to about frame 50, we'll just stop this simulation. In the render rollout, we'll pop up color and transparency. Now in each one of these, you should see a texture map slot as well as a modulate button. So there it is in emission, in diffuse color, as well as in transparency. Now the first one we'll kind of start to play with is going to be smoke. So uh, let's just uh, render this out really quickly and we can see the smoke and how that's presented here and then let's uh, go into our texture map slot we'll pop up the material editor and let's just grab this uh, cellular map and drop it into the texture and when we want this to affect we also have to click on the modulate button so I'll zoom in a little bit so we can get a better look and we'll render this out 
So what you should be able to see is now the smoke is getting, as far as its color goes, modulated by this cellular texture map, which can add uh, a lot of detail after the fact. You can see we have darker and lighter areas, and some of the fractal patterns that are in that cellular texture are also represented. Um, if we want to go into that material, you know, we can adjust exactly how dark this might be and of course the uh, the size of that so maybe I can make the size a little bit larger to 8 and you can see it get bigger so this is a pretty nice option and actually uh, renders really fairly fast to give you some added detail to your simulation and this can all happen post simulation um, so you don't have to resim in order to get these types of effects um, we can do this in our smoke as well as in the transparency. Transparency tends to take a little bit more time to render, but if we just paste this in and choose modulate, what you'll see is um, while it does take a bit more time to render, it also actually will change the volume of what you have here. So uh, the transparency is really the only channel that's able to do that. The other ones are really modulating the color, whereas this is going to modulate uh, what you can actually see. So we may see some more of this red flame on the inside of the smoke because it'll become a little bit more transparent. So you can see here that we definitely have a, a different setup as far as the transparency goes and we're able to see through as well as change the outer silhouette of what we've already simulated. If we just uh, uncheck this we should be able to get a good before and after. So we'll render this again and you can see how that's changed the volume of the smoke and the outer shape. We'll just pop this over here. So we can see with the modulated version we're able to see through in more places to the fire beneath and it adds a bit more detail uh, using that fractal map uh, as far as what is see-through and what is not. So the next place that we want to look to use maps in order to affect our volume fluid is going to be in the displacement area. So let's go over to our simulator and just go into the rendering section and down here kind of in the middle we have this displacement area. So this is a really good place to change the overall volume and look of what you've already simulated. We can click on enable displacement and we have three different levels that can be used coarse, coarse 2, and fine. Let's just grab that cellular texture that we had before and pop it into the coarse option and take a quick render. As this goes through you should be able to see that this is actually going to push out the volume and displace the surface and perturb the surface in different ways and this is a really good way to add detail. Um, it's also really pretty fast as far as what you get in regards to detail. And if I go down here, maybe we'll just bring the size down a little bit more so we can see more of that cellular pattern show up here in the displacement. And this is done under the coarse displacement, the first coarse displacement setting. So, you know, it's mostly for affecting the overall volume. We can also go in and uh, add a, another level of course or some fine displacement. Under fine displacement, let's just grab this noise texture that we have here and drag it in. And you can see that the size is set to 2 and it's set to fractal. And we'll just render this in. So this will take a little bit longer to render because of course it has um, it's a finer level of displacement but you can really see that we'll get a lot more detail out of the smoke and the fire and a lot of these small fractal patterns can kinda show up in there so now you can see we really added a lot of detail to the top and uh, and the bottom the flames at the bottom look a lot more furious and this is a nice method of getting that type of look out of it now there's one other checkbox here which is the surface driven checkbox and what that allows you to do is derive the displacement based on the surface itself so as the surface moves sometimes this can be a ro more realistic option um, in order to displace or perturb the surface. So if we click on surface driven and uh, we might just want to bring the size down one more. We'll just render this out and you'll see that it looks slightly different but that's because it's actually taking the surface into consideration. So in areas like here where the surface is kind of all scrunched up next to each other you can see where we're getting some of this pulling 
And now that it's finished, you can see that uh, we have some of this kind of pulling and squashing and stretching in different places. And that's going to produce, um, in some cases, a more realistic result for a moving volume of fluid as far as the displacement goes. So these are three different places you can use maps to adjust your fluids either in the simulation or in the rendering values. And they're definitely nice to use as far as tuning to get a more artistic feel. And they can speed up your uh, production in the sense that you may not need to render such a high level or small grid size simulation and get a little bit more detail out of it later with texture modulation or displacement. Thank you very much.